I'm making a video essay on every Harry Potter movie, each one having different topics within each video, whether it be the worst, the best, the one that deserves to be respectful, and so on. Six videos later, here we are in the seventh video, and I'm going to explain why Deathly Hallows Part 1 left me unsatisfied. Before I do start though, I just want to say that I in no way dislike this film. I actually love it, just like how I love all the other Harry Potter films. They hold a place in my heart, and they always will be. But for this one, I'm just only discussing why part one of the finale just didn't feel enjoyable as many other ones. Because, to be honest, every finale in movies do struggle a lot, especially when it comes to different TV shows. I had just finished rereading the books, especially when I finished rewatching the movies. Ever since then, I was able to go see this movie with my family, just like I did the same thing for The Half-Blood Prince. And because I finished rereading the Deathly Hallows book, it took so much longer for me to review the first half of the book, especially going over the first part of the finale. And even after watching, I felt sort of let down after seeing this movie in the concert, and sort of unsatisfied. And even though it wasn't because I had so much hype, it was probably because it just didn't feel much enjoyable for many reasons. I had such problems with it from the very start. The biggest example of this is when Grindelwald is visited by Voldemort. In the book, Grindelwald refused to give Dumbledore up, and after not telling the Dark Lord where the Elder Wand is, he instead lets himself be killed, never wanting to let his former friend and possibly lover down. In the movie, however, they just completely ruin his redemption, and instead just tell us where the Elder Wand is, as he tells him is buried deep within Dumbledore's tomb. The Elder Wand lies with him, of course. Dumbledore. This feels sick to my stomach every time I watched it. And I'm pretty sure many people who have only seen the films don't really know what Grindelwald's heroic actions were, or even his redemption. This film also has the same problems that my previous least favorite movie has, and that is leaving out many things from the book and making possible changes, as they just focused on the very first part of the story that should not have been really focused, and just focus on more of the different parts that should have been kept. Although this film is far more or less guilty than The Order of the Phoenix. Because in The Order of the Phoenix, when I made my video on that film, I discussed how the film just changed a lot of things from the book and left out many details. And even so, the film only focuses on the characters because of David Yates' production for this film, and even Harry being isolated. The scene that bothered me the most was the addition of Harry and Hermione dancing. I have some details to go over and some reasons for this, but this might get some Harry and Hermione shippers mad. Harry and Hermione are friends, nothing else. So to have a scene where they almost kiss, a scene that was not in the book, was taking it way too far. Especially with the way how the book was able to handle the relationship between Harry and Hermione. In the book, after Ron destroyed the Horcrux, and when Harry realizes that Ron was jealous of Harry's relationship with Hermione, Harry says to him, She's like my sister. I love her like a sister, and I reckon she feels the same way about me. It's always been like that. I thought you knew. So to have a scene like this, it just makes us think that there is some chemistry between the two, and is even more drastic when they focus Ron being jealous, as he does have a right to be jealous. Especially with the way that the book did the complete opposite of this, and even Rowling went back and said that she wished that she had paired Harry with Hermione instead of Hermione with Ron, which honestly made me so mad. So instead of having the dance scene be involved, I wish they could have had more concentration, and more focus about Grindelwald's backstory. One of the things that this film pretty much didn't feel enjoyable was the way that they had to go over the seventh book, which is clearly the finale, and especially being able to want to split into two parts. And not only that, the whole filmmakers realized that if they directed the whole movie, they pretty much could have been more four to five hours long. And to be honest, it could have been not enjoyable if they did, and I will give them that. But still, splitting that formula up into two parts never goes well. As I said, The Order of the Phoenix focused on too much on Harry being isolated. So for Deadly Hallows Part 1, I think they focused too much on the bit of camping. And because of that whole camping situation that they focused on, they even left out so many things, such as that deleted scene when Dudley gets his redemption, or even Petunia's redemption, and even that, they even fleshed out Creature's Tale, which is arguably my favorite parts in the seventh book, as Creature was able to go over the whole backstory of how Regulus was able to make the copy of Salazar Southern's locket, especially when Voldemort was able to get the Inferi after them, and Creature being ordered by Regulus to destroy the locket once and for all. 
and when I made my video essay on Deadly Hallows Part 2, I discussed on why the 8th film in the series was able to focus on being able to make the ending be more visually impact on being able to prepare for this big final fight for many reasons. And you might say that Deadly Hallows Part 1 might give the same credit for that, but let's face it, they are two different stories, as Part 1 just focuses on the road adventure, and Part 2 is the ending. And I also remember rereading this book just for this video. And while I did, I was able to put some sense on how many focused on camping it was. I think if I corrected myself, it could have been more like three to four chapters out of 37 that focused on the camping section. With all that camping stuff and the flaws that I see in it, as I said, I really do love this movie, as they pretty much match the same thing. I think the battles in it are great. The Battle of Seven Potters was pretty fantastic, but I do have one small thing to say about that, and that is the scene where Harry and Hagrid went into a muggle streetway. I question myself equally because when I saw this, it just made me question on why the Ministry of Magic would never have any issues about it. And to be honest, Harry was literally almost 17 during this fight. It's pretty much critical when it comes to thinking that he might have used magic outside of school. In the Chamber of Secrets book, Harry receives a letter from the Ministry and they discovered about the magic trace being used and if it means much that if he does that again, he will be expelled, when clearly it was Dobby who did it. Another flaw in this is that Harry used magic in the very first scene in The Prisoner of Azkaban. And then realizing that, that he broke the law, he said he did mention this to Fudge that he should have not used it. I broke the law. Underage wizards aren't allowed to use magic at home. And we can't forget the fact that Harry was able to use magic in self-defense in the Order of the Phoenix. Another glimpse I saw is that people like me see Harry burning the Daily Prophet article in the Half-Blood Prince. But that being said though, the second part of that was pretty well done. Escaping into the ministry scene was pretty much perfect. The battle in the cafe was pretty well thought out. The battle at Malfoy Manor was pretty great, especially the Lovegood's house. This film is pretty great, as I've already mentioned. But that being said, though, it's my second least favorite movie, which is just behind The Order of the Phoenix, or even The Goblet of Fire. I did enjoy the first part of The Deadly Hallows, but even so, it just didn't feel the same when I really felt enjoyed when seeing that movie in the concert with my family, even when I still felt let down and unsatisfied. On top of that, however, this movie did feel accurate when matching the same things when it comes to the battle stuff. But in the end, Deadly Hallows Part 2 will always be a better movie than Part 1, because Part 2 of Deadly Hallows is pretty much the best franchise wrap-up endings throughout any of the other film series.